guys, in today's video we're going to be making this mini amp. Don't run away though because it's super easy, super cheap to make, that's why I chose it. And it's a bit more interesting than just lighting the LED, although it's not that much more complicated. We'll just be making the working circuit on a breadboard of the mini amp. Let's have a look and a listen to what we'll be making in this video. We're now going to make a guitar amp. Don't worry because all you're going to need to know is what we've learned in the video so far. If you're not a guitarist then that doesn't matter since you can use this to amplify sound or music from your phone. Exciting stuff guys, we're going to be using some chips. These are the LM386s. Um, you can get hold of these really cheaply, that's why I chose them. And you can get hold of these really easily as well. I got mine from Bright Components and you can see you got 10 for 189. But you can get them from anywhere else. And here you can get 20 for 156. I'm sure you guys will find yourselves a great deal. I've just noticed here that there are two different types. There are dip eights and sop eights. They both have eight layers, that's what the eight means, but the dip eights are the ones you want to get because they'll fit into breadboards, but the sop eights are really small, so they wouldn't fit on the breadboard. Here is one of the chips, and you can see that it has a little notch there, and we're just going to put it in the breadboard with the notch at the top, so we're just going to put it in like that. And you can see we have the data sheet here, and the little notch is there at the top that we put on the breadboard, and we can use this as a guide. And you can see that all of the legs here are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. For clarity, you just want to make sure that your chip is over this little trough thing here so that all of the legs are separated. Here is the wrong setup and in this case each pair of legs are connected which is not what we want. Here we just have our setup, you can see it's set up correctly. Now let's deal with the audio signal coming in, either on your phone, your microphone, or in our case, the guitar. So here we have the data sheet, and you can see here that the input is in pin 2 and pin 3, which we can see here. Our audio signal will be coming out of these two contacts here. So there'll be a wire connecting this contact to one of the pins in the breadboard, and this contact to one of the pins in the breadboard. I want to give you guys a closer look. Here is the socket and I picked this up for a few pence. This is connected to my guitar lead. The audio signal comes out of this bit of metal here and this bit of metal here which is separated by this black insulator. When I connect it back up, the audio signal is transferred to these two contacts just here. Hopefully this is self-evident how it works. If you're not using one of these and you're using um, a smaller jack, then you can get smaller sockets that will fit onto these as well. If you can't get hold of one of those, then you can just repurpose an old pair of headphones by just snipping the wire off at one of the earpieces. And inside here you should find two wires which you can just connect up onto your breadboard and into your chip. Here I've just attached these two wires by twisting them onto these two contacts here. I'd usually have soldered them, but I just wanted to show you guys how you can just mess around with electronics with minimal equipment. I didn't have black or red wire, so I just used pink for positive and grey for negative. So I'm going to put my pink wire, which is the positive, into pin 3, which is 1, 2, 3. I can put it anywhere on this row, so I'm going to just choose here. And then I'm going to do the same for my black wire. Um, negative is pin 2, so I'm going to put that in here. We're now going to connect up our power source. We really need 9 volts, and these are only 3 volts. We could connect them together in series um, to get 9 volts, or what I'm going to do is just use this 9 volt battery. Now you could just solder two wires to these two contacts here, and then plug them straight into your breadboard. Or you could just use one of these clips, which is what I'm going to use. You can make your own one of these, which we've done here. Um, and I've done a video showing you guys how to make one if you don't have one of these. I'm just looking at the data sheet now to figure out where I can put my positive and negative wires in. And the power supply voltage here is where we put in our positive, and that is pin 6. And the GND here stands for ground, and whenever you see ground, that's where you put in your negative wire. So we'll just put that in now. Positive power supply voltage is pin 6, which is just here. And the ground is pin 4, which we'll put in here. Yeah. 
Now for the output, here I just have a little speaker and you can see the positive side and the negative side here and I've attached two wires to it, but just by twisting them onto the two contacts here. You can get them smaller or bigger ones like this one and you can get them really cheap and they're really easy to get hold of. Alternatively, if you have an old or outdated laptop, then that's likely to have some great speakers in, a lot better than these two. So I'd encourage you to take that apart and take the speakers from there since it's free. Also, in general, I'd encourage you to take things apart since you can find so many great components in. And you might find LEDs, switches, fans, speakers, or you might even find an audio socket to use in your mini amp. Here I have two speakers that I just found in the basement. This one looks pretty worse for wear, um, but if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. Here I just have another speaker, and I'm hoping this one works because it doesn't look too, too broken. And here you can just see where I've plugged in the positive and where I can connect up the negative, and then this will go into our breadboard. The other end of these two wires are connected to my speaker. Now let's cut these into the breadboard. The positive wire needs to go to the output and let's look on our table. The output is via, we can see is connected to pin five. So let's put this in pin number five. I think this is number five. Yep, it is. Now for our negative wire, I'm looking on the table here and I can't see a specific pin for the negative output. So we'll put that into ground. And ground is just the same as where we've connected up the negative side of our battery. I'm just going to put a bit of blue tack on here, just because I haven't soldered them, and just to keep them in place, stop them from moving around. So let's hope that's... Now let's plug in our battery. Oh, that sounds good. And then let's plug in guitar lead. Hopefully you guys can hear that buzzing in the background. That is just the amp. And part of the reason for this is that there's a small amount of electricity being picked up by my guitar lead. And that's just being amplified by the amp, which is great because that means that our circuit is working. This is a bit unexpected, but I didn't really want to be unplugging and plugging back in my battery. So I'm just going to quickly introduce a switch to our circuit. I probably don't need to explain this, but I'm just going to disconnect the circuit by unplugging the positive side of the battery. I'm just going to put it in over here. I'm now going to connect up the break in the circuit by implementing the switch which has connected to these two wires. So I'm going to connect one side of the switch here and then the other side of the switch to where the red wire of the battery was which was just here. Currently the switch is off so I'm going to connect the circuit by turning it on. Hopefully you can hear that buzzing in the background which means that the switch works. Hopefully you can see the setup that we have here. We have our circuit, we have one end of our lead plugged into our socket, we have the speaker and these wires back here, these are just plugged into the back of the speaker. Um, we also have my dog here. <laughs> She's sleeping and she was snoring quite loudly earlier, so let's, let's hope that doesn't start up again. Right, let's turn on our on switch plug our lead in and let's see if this mini amp actually does work. it's a very good quality speaker this is just this battery that's powering it all i think it's just it's really amazing and i'm really impressed with how this turned out remember the broken speaker from earlier well we're going to try that one out now is quite dirty and may not be the quality of sound you'd want for amplifying music from your phone, but this is a great sound for a guitar amp and is almost exactly what we were aiming for, if not better. Another go? Do you like it? I've just disconnected one of the big speakers and I've just plugged in one of these little ones, so shall we see how this sounds? I'm not sure if you guys can hear that, but it does work. This would be a great thing to take on holiday and to make as a little mini amp. Here I just have two boxes and I'm thinking about putting my amp inside of them. I would have repurposed an old container or an old box, but I saw these for £150, £2 and you can't really go wrong for that price. So I'm thinking about using these.
In a few seconds, we'll be showing you guys the bloopers, but before we do that, make sure to check out our next video where we make this for our mini amp. Also, since I know that this video is getting quite long, we'll be doing a separate video doing a sort of conclusion to our mini amp project to see and talk about how it went. And also, there's two mystical pins that we have yet to use, pin one and eight, and we'll be showing you guys how you can use that into your mini amp circuit and genuinely improve your mini amp circuit. Also, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll leave you with a sneak peek of the finished amp. Bye! <laughs>